Hello, good afternoon everyone. Myself, Dr. Sonali Kagni. I'm an endocrinologist. Presently, I'm working at Sir H.N. Reliance Foundation Hospital. We recently celebrated the Mother's Day and I would like to grab this opportunity about talking about the diabetes in motherhood on this occasion of Mother's Day. As we all know that we are facing a epidemic of obesity and diabetes worldwide as well as in India. On this background, we are seeing a lot of women who are presenting in their pregnancies as and they have the blood sugar levels on the higher side. We all know that diabetes can affect all the organ systems adversely if it is not kept in the normal control. Similarly, it is applicable for the diabetes in pregnancy. If the blood sugar during pregnancy remains on the higher side, it can affect the maternal health as well as the fetal health adversely. The, uh, the pregnancy can have adverse outcomes such as increased number of spontaneous abortions, fetal demise, they may face the fetus or the baby may face multiple kind of uh, fetal anomalies, birth defects. They may have uh, at birth, they may have increased uh, chances of prolonged uh, jaundice. They may have low sugar episodes. The baby may be born large for the uh, birth weight. At the same time, in their later life, the babies can have uh, these offsprings can have problems such as development of uh, obesity, hypertension, as well as diabetes during their childhood as well as in their adulthood. Therefore, it is very important that we all know about diabetes in the pregnancy, how to handle it, how to screen for it, and how do we treat and prevent it. So, we generally get two kinds of scenarios. One, in which a woman already is diagnosed with diabetes and she gets pregnant. Or, generally, uh, most commonly, we see a scenario in which a woman does not have diabetes, but during the pregnancy, in the later half of the pregnancy, when we check for the blood glucose level, we find that the blood glucose is on the higher side. First, we'll deal with a pre-existing diabetes. That is, a woman already taking medicines or intervention for the diabetes. The woman may have either a type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes. And if they want to plan pregnancy, in that case, First and foremost thing to take into consideration is that they should make sure that their blood glucose are in the normal range for the planning the pregnancy. The parameter that we generally use is the 3 months average sugar or HbA1c level. It is said that the HbA1c should be as normal as possible in order to make the pregnancy successful and uneventful. So, the HbA1c level, we, we should target it to be less than 6.5%, at least less than 6.5% if it can be safely achieved without the uh, any episodes of low blood sugar or hypoglycemia. Once, if the blood sugar is not in the control, the pregnancy should be avoided with the use of effective contraception till the time we achieve the target blood glucose level. If the blood, once the blood glucose is in the normal range, we should also look for any complications of diabetes in the form of diabetes eye disease or diabetes kidney disease. We can look after it with the help of certain examination of the eye or examination of the urine or the blood to test for the kidney function. Once the complications are looked after and they are properly treated, we should also see if any women 
or is taking any medicine for the blood pressure or a uh, medicine for blood cholesterol as well as if she is taking some medicines for the diabetes we should make sure that all these medicines are safe if she gets pregnant and if she can continue that pregnancy it is very important because certain kind of medications used to treat blood pressure such as um ACE inhibitors and ARBs or the ones which are used to treat the blood cholesterol such as statins cannot be used or they are not safe during pregnancy therefore if someone wants to plan pregnancy then the person has to uh, visit consult a doctor and you know change the medicines towards the safer versions having said that it is also very important that these women monitor their blood sugars very regularly and keep a watch on them before the pregnancy before the conception during the pregnancy as well as after the pregnancy for someone who is taking insulin for type 1 diabetes they should also be a, uh, a very regular with their schedule of the meal as well as insulin because during the pregnancy because of the say nausea vomiting the food intake can go for a toss and in that case the adjustment of insulin doses becomes very very important as missing any kind of dose or missing the meals may predispose the uh, women with type 1 diabetes to the risk of development of diabetes ketoacidosis which is a serious condition and if such women if they are unable to take the uh, eat food normally then they should immediately consult with the doctor and get admitted for the for the management this is about the women with pre existing diabetes sometimes many women of uh, want to plan pregnancy they don't know if they have diabetes or not in that case if they want to plan pregnancy it is better that they should get their test blood test done to check for the presence or absence of diabetes what we do uh, generally test is fasting blood sugar post meal blood sugar and hba1c uh, sugar uh, levels if these reports are in the pre diabetes or diabetic range then appropriate treatment should be taken the they should wait for the blood sugars to be in the normal range and then they should go ahead and plan the pregnancy if a woman has absolutely normal levels of all these blood test then she can very well go ahead and plan the pregnancy however during pregnancy there are so many hormonal changes that are occurring in the body these changes lead to insulin resistance meaning that the insulin which is produced in your body they it may face some hurdles for keeping the blood sugar in the normal range and this insulin resistance go on increasing from 12 weeks onwards and it kind of reaches to a maximum level towards the 24th to 26th week and it can go on increasing in women in few of these women who were maintaining their blood sugar in the normal range during the first half of pregnancy may not be able to maintain so in the later half this this condition we call it as gestational diabetes mellitus this gdm the treatment for this is also the same we have to keep the blood glucose in the normal range to avoid the uh, expected complications of high sugar level however the good part about this is just taking care of the lifestyle in the form of modification of the diet in a healthier way and adapting to a regular physical activity which is permissible for that current situation of uh, age of the gestation 70 to 85% of the women can maintain their blood glucose level in the normal range just with the lifestyle intervention and 15 to 30% may require the uh, some other other form of treatment for controlling the blood glucose level so coming to the treatment part it is the first and foremost treatment for any type of diabetes be it during pregnancy or otherwise 
is the medical nutrition therapy or in short the diet modification generally we should uh, uh, any woman with uh, diabetes should include a nutrient dense uh, uh, food products which are uh, rich in whole grains foods which are rich in fiber such as a good amount of salads vegetables as well as fruits and they should avoid the processed products in the form of packaged food all kind of uh, maida products or bakery products they should avoid they should avoid fatty red meat and they should completely avoid use of sugar jaggery honey or any kind of sugar containing beverages or all kind of sweet dish in order to maintain their blood sugar in the normal range at the same time the diet should contain good amount of protein in the form of either dal or sprouts if uh, they are vegetarian and also in the form of egg fish or chicken if a person is uh, can have a uh, non veg diet at the same time as we just mentioned the women should continue to uh, do a regular physical activity which is allowed for her present uh, clinical condition during the pregnancy in consultation with their treating gynecologist once we uh, know that we have started the treatment in the form of medical nutrition therapy now we have to monitor the blood glucose level so that we know that we are on the right path so when we check the blood glucose level during pregnancy we check we rely more on the blood glucose level than on the hba1c level because of the hemodynamic changes occurring during pregnancy the hba1c level in the later of a pregnancy uh, are not very reliable so what we do is we uh, generally check a fasting blood glucose a blood glucose one hour after taking the meal and blood glucose two hours after taking the meal we generally ask uh, the mothers to monitor their blood glucose level at home with the help of a glucometer and the targets are fasting blood glucose we want them or we want to maintain the fasting blood glucose below 95 mg per deciliter the one hour post meal blood glucose we want to maintain it below 140 and the 2 hour post meal blood glucose we want to maintain it below 120 mg per deciliter to have optimum results and to avoid the complications because of the high blood sugar levels then coming to the uh, different kind of uh, evaluations all throughout the pregnancy the visits with the gynecologist the radiologist then if they have diabetes then with the diabetologist all these things and physical visits can be very very hectic for a woman who is pregnant so the studies have shown that even adapting to uh, telehealth is uh, shown to reduce some of the complications of the pregnancy and whenever possible we uh, women can adapt to this telehealth as well while controlling the blood sugar level the same time it should be uh, the blood pressure should be maintained below 135 by 85 mm of mercury coming to the weight gain during pregnancy because uh, many women who has pre existing uh, diabetes especially pre diabetes or type 2 diabetes they may be uh, having excess weight so the weight gain that is uh, expected during pregnancy for a woman who has normal weight to start with can be somewhere around 10 to 14 kg whereas if the woman is overweight the weight gain that is allowed will be, uh, will be in the tune of 7 to 10 kg and for someone who is obese the weight gain which is allowed is in the tune of 5 to 8 kg in order to maintain this weight to the desired level as well as to manage the diabetes it is very important that one should take help of the registered di- uh, registered dietitian and nutritionist so that the entire process of uh, this pregnancy goes smoothly coming to the last part that is the delivery and postpartum state so as soon as the baby is delivered and the placenta is separated the insulin resistance in the body drops down 
and that is the time when the insulin requirement which was there during the pregnancy especially in the third trimester of the pregnancy also this insulin requirement drops down dramatically and it may also be reduced to the extent that it uh, almost 50% of the uh, requirement comes down and the, therefore we should be very careful when we are kind of uh, giving the treatment in the form of insulin post the delivery for someone who is having pre existing diabetes need to monitor the blood sugars very carefully even post partum and according to uh, accordingly we have to adjust the medicines for women who has gestational diabetes mellitus she is at an increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes during her lifetime it is advisable that this women should check their uh, blood sugar levels approximately 1 to 3 months post delivery and depending upon if the sugars are in the normal range or they are in the pre diabetes or diabetic range they should continue to screen their blood sugars yearly or every 3 year, yearly to their entire lifetime and the same thing is applicable for someone who was having pre diabetes during uh, or before the pregnancy they should also continue monitoring their blood glucose level at regular intervals of at least once in a year and they should be continued throughout coming to the fact that these mothers when they enter into the late adulthood they get very very busy looking after their kids then their entire family and sometimes they kind of overlook their own health so it is our responsibility that we make sure that our mothers are having a healthy diet they are taking their meals on time they are taking their medicines on time they are checking the blood glucose levels timely and consulting with the doctors at regular intervals after all mothers are the backbone of the family and if they they are they fall in even for a day we all know what can happen therefore it is our responsibility as kids to take care of our mother's health at all time another important fact that i want to uh, mention here is that even if a woman does not have diabetes but any of her family members has diabetes or any of her family members has any risk factors for development of diabetes such as if they are overweight or obese or they are physically inactive any distant relative uh, in their family have a history of diabetes so all these things put everyone in the family at risk of development of diabetes in future and i would say mother can play a very very important role in preventing the development of diabetes in these uh, family members because she is the one who decides what grocery to be bought she is the one who decides what vegetables what fruits to be brought she is the one who decides whether she want to store more of packaged food in the form of bread biscuit toast at home versus if she wants to store a uh, healthy food in the form of more of salads and fruits and vegetables she is the one who decides how much oil to be put while cooking a vegetable or while you know cooking a biryani therefore if she decides and if she starts following a healthy diet herself and if she makes a rule that everyone in her family is going to follow this rule and she makes the healthy food available to all in the family members most of the times she can indirectly make the healthier changes in everyone's diet if she kind of starts uh, uh taking some time from her daily busy schedule and goes for the exercise routinely automatically the kids who are observing her they will also follow it and this trend can continue therefore it is very very important that we as mothers should take this responsibility of changing the environment of our family in a healthier way by adapting to healthy diet and regular physical activity by ourselves 
and thereby indirectly making others to follow it. And if we decide it, if we accept this fact firmly, we decide to do it very, very responsibly. And if we, each one of us decide this, I'm very sure that all of us can make a huge, huge change and probably we can help curtail this epidemic of obesity and diabetes. And I'm very sure together we can and we will make the difference. Thank you so much.